presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to our man, Al in Homo Sasa. What's going on, brother? It's, isn't it wonderful? I went ahead and invested in your uh, Tiger Dollars, <laughs> and I went ahead and got the gold report <laughs> for a year, and, and also your, morning, your, your call letter and stuff like that. That and I got over fifty percent return in one day, not counting uh, everything else. But I just want to thank you. Tom's not perfect, but he tells you how to put your stops in, and he keeps your losses small. You can take your small losses, but then all of a sudden you'll be like Dave Root, and you'll hit a home run. I mean, a big home run. Yeah. And put the money in your pocket. Okay, I mean, brother. I You're awesome, man. Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> No growl, it's Basil Chapman here. This is the Tom O'Brien Show. Tommy's out and I'm subbing. So I'm um, the guest host and as such, we'll go through all the numbers. We'll look at them very closely. I am the host of the Tiger Technicians Hour, 10 o'clock to 11 Eastern time every market day. And my service here in the newsletter business is the opening call, daily newsletter. And what we're going to look at right now is what happened to that early spike. I'll show it to you right here. In the futures, the Dow futures just doodling around in the, about the 4270 level at six o'clock. And then suddenly I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, let's see, that is um, a nice turnaround. And then it gets higher and higher and higher. And it goes from 4270s up to the high of the day, 4335.50. And it's some, some, something about Putin. And I'm thinking to myself, why would the market rally when, 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 when it's something to do with Putin, I mean, would you trust anything that he said? Anyway, so as it stands right now, um, we're down at the lows of the day at 42.28 from 43.35 to 42.28. I would say that's about 100 points. Yeah. So, OK, let's get to the nitty gritties. We want to look at the market. What's going on? A lot of people asked if I if I get a chance, uh, could I continue what I had done earlier today, looking at uh, different areas of the market. But I also want to add a bunch of stocks. So let's just go right through it. We've got the down at down at 87 at 33,086. 33, There's a pattern in the Chapman Wade methodology that I I look at all the time. It's a straight line up or down. But within that context, you can also get a cup formation and an arch formation. And what happens when it goes straight down, it mixes one and three. I make that red because as it turns down, if it fails after just one peak, like a peak A or a peak B in the Chapman Week methodology, and it starts to roll over, it can quickly take out the left side low. And that becomes the pattern that I call the dreaded H because you can see right here on the left, there's the daily chart. Look, from that peak D, oh, let me just do this really quickly. Uh, if I can get this to, um, there we go. So click, one more, I just got that. So what we're looking for in the Chapman Way, for those of you new to my work, I tried to identify the lowest low bar. I, I counter alphabetize, essentially grading each successively higher peak. Each one gets a new alphabetic letter uh, sequentially, A, P, B, P, C, P, D. It can even go to E, F, and G. There's never an H at D. You have to consider whether or not there's an alternative count. Other things can happen at your fourth highest peak. This is as simple as it gets. All right, here we go. Move this aside. We made a peak D in the daily chart in the Dow, January the 5th at 35,000, oops, at 36,952. It pulled back to 35,600 and 13 points down, 1,300 points, and then it rallies sharply and it starts to fail and it rolls over, takes out the left side low, dreaded H, and it goes plunging down. It gets to 33,150 on the 24th of January, rallies sharply, only goes to a peak C, fails because at 25,824, it turns down. It breaks the 200 period moving average support, this little yellowish line and goes all the way down to 32,272. 
Now, I talked about this uh, for some time on my show. I said the pattern from the low that was made on the 24th of January said that there should be a rally. You've got just a, a number of bars after the initial spike to that A in which to break to the upside. And normally you get a buy mode going to a D if the, if the stochastic can start to hold above 80%. It didn't. It went over 80% and immediately fell. And we've got exactly the same situation here. Nice bounce off that low of the 20, 24th of February. It goes to peak A and then four days it takes it. And the fourth day it tries to rally. You remember it tried to rally and then it just couldn't do it. The 34,179, it failed. It makes the arch formation. But wait a minute. It had a successful test because it was above 32,578 on uh, Tuesday. was in fact higher than that um, lower the 24th of February. So that said, there's a possibility that now you can go from an H pattern, a lowercase h, to a lowercase m. And it was really important that in this process, there was some follow through after the big move up on Wednesday. Thursday was kind of pathetic. And today it tried to rally. So this is actually, this is, <laughs> I'll be polite. This is pathetic action after everything we've seen. And if by Monday or Tuesday, there isn't a push into the 33,500, 600 area, this is not good news at all. Then the weekly chart made the H pattern failed and it is now trying desperately to hold that 32,272 level. Monthly chart, um, it hasn't even gone, to, so the daily is in a sell mode, the, the weekly is in a sell mode. The monthly chart hasn't even started a sell signal. So that's still in a buy mode. Okay. I just wanted to get that out of the way. Now we'll do the others much quicker. S&P, daily, weekly, monthly. S&P right now is down 32 at 42.7. It had an arch formation that failed, going to the 24th of February, 41.14.65. Rallied quite nicely, but really not enough, to the 44.16 level. There's a pattern that I call the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It didn't even get there. It even failed to hold above the two orange 200 period moving average in the daily chart. And then what happened is it pulled back, <clears throat> held to a higher a low than the 24th of Feb. And here was the opportunity. Today was the opportunity to rally much sharper. It hasn't done that. Sell mode daily, sell mode weekly. Not yet a sell signal in the monthly. I had spent quite a bit of time this morning uh, talking about the pattern that I call the Chapman Wave um, Roman candle, this particular candle right here. I'm not going to do that right now, other than to say if there is a close on a monthly basis below 41.14.65, this, this harkens, this, this suggests that we're going to have a longer consolidation and probably a deeper one. So it's really important by Friday week, for exactly this time next week, that the Dow, rather than being <clears throat> uh, much lower and the S&P being below 4,100, is actually up in the 4,330 area or higher. So we got the QQQ, same thing turned around, the daily chart, uh, not a good pattern, sell mode, weekly chart is sell mode. And the monthly chart is really close to a sell signal. IWM, sell mode, sell mode. And the monthly chart actually is closer to a sell signal. So, so far, it's not looking that great. I'll be back with a lot to discuss. Basil Chap, heading in for Tom O'Brien. I'll be back in a moment. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right. 
information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman sending in for Tom O'Brien. I got big shoes to fill here, but we'll do the best we can. See this trend line here, that green line, and you see the pink line. This is the one minute chart of the E mini. And you see, I call this a Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. As long as the every time the price comes in there, it bounces up. Well, it's bouncing up right now. Now we're only down 27 at 42.30 in the E mini. But look at the right side. This is the one minute chart. Yes, the 10 minute chart. See the pattern that we're calling the dreaded H? You see, there's that H turned around at a peak B minus, the second peak. It went down and broke the left side low. It went down further and stopped at about 42.30. And then what happened? It rallied up to where? Look how important this 200 period exponential moving average is. You just have to put it in. You don't need it until you need it. It's just one of those things. Suddenly it looms in front of you and you say, oh, oh, 200 period, better make a note of that. And that became resistance. It was support and there came resistance <clears throat> and the arch formation. Now we're testing that left side low. We've already taken it out. We've gone down to the uh, 42, what is that, 42, 2550 area. So it's really important the next couple of moments, if there's no strength going into the close and then there's sort of bad news over the weekend, Monday could be quite ugly. So let's just see what happens. Meantime, let's get back to our charts. We're looking at um, crude oil. So crude oil, this is the continuous contract trading at 109.20 up $3.19 holding the black 14 period exponential moving average just above the, the green nine period moving average as long as the green is above the 14 that's a good sign excuse me <coughs> it spiraled up to 130.50 and um look we were at 60 dollars in december december this is exactly uh, december to january january february february march three months just three months ago we were at 60 we've more than doubled and so anyone who says that we weren't going uh, higher, well, we were going much higher. Look, crude oil has been going up since uh, that, just since, let's call it uh, October, November of uh, November, the week of the, the 6th, uh, 2020 at 29.08. So it's absolutely been going higher. And uh, what we are looking at here is there's, a, there's an aberration to the price of oil because of uh, the scarcity of oil. It's just as simple as that. Uh, you, you start to produce more oil and see the prices go down. Remember, we used to have Ed Young here, commodity expert, and he used to always say, the, um, the, the resolution to higher prices is higher prices, because at some point you can't go much higher, or these people get tired, they don't pay that. 
and then their prices start to go down. So what we're looking at here is the crude oil on a very long-term basis, looking at the monthly chart, and uh, you've got crude oil back to that whole series of highs from 2010 all the way to 2014. There was that spike that went from, um, it went from a low in 2007, right there, uh, January, let's go to January of 2007, it rallied all the way to a high, and that was at 123. This is a continuous contract, so the prices might change, but the, nothing else changes, just that it gets smoothed out, so the price uh, the price gets um, resolved because of the futures contracts, and therefore you get a change in the price. <clears throat> so you go to an all-time high in July of 2008 of 219.41, but that was... Uh, July of 2008, and you remember it was October of 2007 that the market made its high, I believe. Uh, let me just check that. I don't want to talk out of turn. S&P, SPX, .X, there it is. Uh, yes, there it is. Um, <clears throat> 2000, right here. Uh, 2000, uh, March, March of 2000, was the 1557 high, and we crumbled down to the July low of 775, ran up for the, almost a double top at 1576. I love the way these charts work out. After all that, you go and you can barely make it above the previous high back in 2007, October at 1576. And there's the Chapman Wave Roman candle right there, that second candle, the candle of the 11th of, that's November of 2007. Um, I'll talk about that in a moment when we get back. And then it plunges down and breaks the 775 low, and it goes down to 666.79, March of 2009. And um, then it runs all the way up. You had a number of small consolidations, then a really big one, minus 35% in the S&P from 339, 3, 393 in February of 2020, and the next month you hit a low of 21.91, and then we run all the way up to this 48.18.62 high. So what we're looking at is within the context of patterns, you've got crude oil with that, let me just go back for a moment, that was the high that was made, and it came, I think, almost the month of the turnaround when Russia invaded Georgia. Yep, there it is. Russia invaded Georgia uh, August the 1st to August the 12th, very short 12 days, and then crude oil plunged. So what is different here, what's different here is that the whole scenario, everything about the scenario has changed. So this leg E in the monthly chart underneath all the previous highs says, yeah, you know what, there could be some kind of a consolidation just as things get figured out but oil is still in play, and you've got to consider that much higher oil. The Fed has a real issue because look at this. The Fed, I'm just moving from step to step within my thinking here. The Fed, with interest rates rallying higher with the bonds, the TLT, breaking the 134.98 low of the, of the around about the 14th, 15th of Feb, after running to 142, it comes back and goes to the low of uh, Thursday, yesterday, of 133.72. Isn't it amazing how these patterns uh, match within one point of that left side low? Uh, just a little bit more, in fact. And now we're trying to rally. And look at this. I'm going to try to do it now. I'm taking a bit of a chance. Let's see if I can do it. This is what I show my subscribers to my opening call every Saturday. Or it might be Sunday if I'm not able to do Saturday. But every weekend... I have a, a video about 50 minutes to an hour and a half sometimes discussing all these different things, what we're looking at, why we're looking at it, what, what, what can be anticipated, what is the shorter term outlook to the longer term outlook, etc. But look, yields have made legs C in the weekly chart. This is the 30 year, the white is the 30 year, the brown, the, the 10 year hasn't broken above the left side high, but the five year has. So this conglomeration of the three major yields that I look at, the 30-year, the 10-year T-note yields, and the 5-year T-note yield, they rally sharply. So when I go back and I'm saying, so you've got crude oil going higher, you've got wheat and the grains going much, much higher, 
What's the Fed going to do? And you've got the market so shaky. You've had NASDAQ stocks. I mean, look at DocuSign. You've had some stocks drop 60 to 70 or even more percentage points. Uh, percentage, I mean, that is, what is the Fed? If you were at the Fed right now, your charter is that when the economy seems to be, your statistics are showing you that the economy is doing well. You can't really project ahead because you don't know what's coming up. You have to look behind. Economists look behind, mostly. It says that up until, until now, the economy is doing pretty darn well. Why, why would you even think of lowering rates? If anything, you'd be, for years, you should have been raising rates accordingly because demand is there. Now what can they do? They've got to try to beat inflation somehow or other. Interesting, I'll talk about the charts on the right. Group, which is the iShares, Timber and Forestry ETF, and the Housing Index. I'll be back in a moment. That's a chap sitting here for Tom O'Brien. Dow's down 74, S&P's down 32. Be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Dow is down 108. This is really not good action. I just wanted to say, uh, because I, I know you have, we have traders, we have people that take long-term positions, all that. We have just a host of a variety of, of people listening to TFNN all around the world. I, I've, it's amazing. We, I mean, we have people from, I have subscribers from all over the show. So I just want to mention that when I was speaking about this earlier in the day, I had mentioned that when the pink line went, when the green line went under the pink line, that's the line went, went under the 14 period moving average, that basically said that's a sell signal. 
And even when there was this rally that at about 10 o'clock, there was this rally that failed. And once again, we had to fail at about, uh, at one thirty. We had a rally that failed at the 200 period moving average. Look, that pink line remained. And even now it's pink, probably going into the close. It's going to be pink. We'll see. So that says that from about right here, and you can do this on any chart you want. It doesn't matter if this is the futures, but you could. This is right at 4290. Let's call it 4300. Since then, we've been just sailing down. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, wow, this is not good. Oops, now we just uh, slid even more, down 30, down 39 in the S&P. And this is leg D right here. You remember the, the pattern I was talking about? I said, this is a chapter, this, this channel down. This is a beautiful inside track propellant zone. Look, all of a sudden it's become a repellent zone. That's how important these. Look how many times it was tested. Try to rally above, and each rally was smaller and smaller and smaller okay with that said let's just get back to our story what we want to look at here was <clears throat> so before i forget all week no for two weeks now i've been wanting to mention on my show and i complete i don't know why it just slipped my mind um and one of the things that reminded me was <clears throat> during the week let me have a drink of tea here uh, <clears throat> that's better during the week I kept went to mention, and I got reminded when Frank from Gloucester called Tom the other day. <clears throat> I said to myself, "Oh my goodness, I keep forgetting." Oh, about three years ago, we were going to go to the to, in Gloucester. We were going to go to the Cape Cod Museum. <clears throat> uh, we were there for a particular reason, and we wanted to take some friends who had just got off a boat on their way uh, up north. And uh, we met them there from overseas. We met them. They had come from New York. And we were looking for things to do. We went to Rockport. We always go to Rockport. Love Rockport. <laughs> and then I said, oh, wait a minute. Look at this. Um, there are a couple of museums. And my wife said, hey, but what about the Cape Cod Museum? Uh, Cape Ann Museum. That's north of Boston. So it was closed. Finally, about two weeks ago, we got to go. It is a fabulous museum. And nothing as small as you can see from the outside. It's Cape Cod. Uh, Cape and museum they have fabulous exhibitions going on right now absolutely terrific and had frank from gloucester reminded me of it and gloucester is a really pretty place so all right let's get back to our story i just got that out the way a question about uh, rio uh talking about the, the reason why I, I went to gloucester was in the, in the den mike is asking about rio that's rio tinto so rio tinto uh used to always have what it is uh, it's one of the commodities, and I'll never remember what it is. Um, just remind me if you can. <clears throat> yes. So, oh, uh, really, uh, oh, to hang on. So if you're long, this is a little unusual because it went to a peak, G slash C. Everything about it says it's probably a G. And therefore, <clears throat> pulling back to the 200 period moving average. Now, um, I don't know where you got in. So I'm just going to say, let me do this for one second here. Click. Um, oh, what does Rio Tinto do? I should know these backwards. I, it's, I wish metal is it. Um, Miley Metals Company operating in 35 countries around the world. Rio Tinto uh, product group springs, purpose like aluminum, copper, minerals, and iron ore. <coughs> So this is in the, the sweet spot. It was in the sweet spot. It still is in the sweet spot. But I think deliveries are also going to be an issue. If you look at the shipping stocks, let's go to DSX. DSX, DSX. Where did I tell? I typed it into the uh, question at Google. Uh, DSX. DSX, Diane, Diane shipping, shipping, bulk shippers are up near the highs, um, but haven't bro hasn't broken out yet. Uh, from the high at about six six point forty, so, and it's trading at four point ninety six down. It's even down today. So I'm just going to do this. Uh, I don't know where you got it. Oh, you're in it for seventy four. Oh, 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 oh. That's very different. <clears throat> oh, they just paid a semi annual dividend yesterday. Oh, okay, forty four point eighty. That's why the price came down. <clears throat> Excuse me. What I'm going to do is this. If you're in at 74 and it's a little weak today, the 200 period moving average of 71.96 is 
it's really important because if it, last time, it, ever since it broke above it, that became the propellant line. Even when it came back down and, and, and intraday went down below, it closed above and it showed all the way from the around about the 69-ish area to the 83. It's a peak G slash C. It looks like a peak G in the uh, daily chart. It's in a D, a weekly peak D. And I'm just going to say to you, looking out, I can see it pulling back to the 68, maybe even one sudden slide to 66. But the trajectory is apparent to me that it's got a peak C in the monthly chart. It held very well. This should be in many ways the sweet spot, and it's not over the last week as the other commodities were doing very well. So I'm going to say to you, I, you if you've already got your dividend, now's the time maybe to lighten up. Keep a core position. I'd lighten up. It really must hold 70 by Tuesday. Let's put it that way. But I would lighten up right here if you've already got that dividend. That's number one. And I would put the money that you take off aside and I'd be prepared. I don't want, if it starts to close under 68, that is actually not good action at all. But if it just pulls back to 71, 30, 60, uh, 71, 60, uh, 71, yeah, 71, 30 to 70.60 and holds and then has a move that takes it above 75.50, that's great action. So what I would say is, Maybe if you, I don't know if you want to do it for two points, it could be more, but it could be less to take money off. I mean, with taxes and all the stuff that's going on. So maybe what I would do is to say, hold off for one day. It could be a big mistake because you could gap down on Monday, but I'm just going to say, hold off for a day. Let's see how it holds because there is a lot of support in the, in the low 70 area. So I, I'm changing my mind. I was going to say, take something else, especially if you've got the dividend, I would say use a little bit of the dividend as a kind of a stop. Um, do they still pay if you sell? Oh, sell after. The, do they still pay if you sell the day after the ex dividend? Um, well, you should have. You should see that, and you should get a notice about that. You know what? Let's be safe. Hold it for the day, even if we do gap down. Let's say gap down like today. It's down a dollar nineteen. Let's say it's down another dollar or two. That I don't think is going to make a big mistake, big error in, in your calculations here. I'd rather know on Monday where it's because if it holds very well and it actually touches 73.50, that's really good. So I'm going to, yeah, I, I'm just going to say, why don't you hold it through the weekend? Uh, it's, uh, I just don't think it's worth playing games right now. You've got, you've got that position and, um, to get back in, if it bumps up to 75, um, I'd rather wait a day. That's all I'm going to say. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I'm O'Brien. Hi folks, Basil Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien. So just a couple of things. Look at this left side low in the 10-minute E-mini from 2280 that's 840 last night that was the 10th uh, that was the low at 423200 round number it goes peak a peak, peak c and then it goes to d holds tight and all of a sudden you get this news whoops it spikes up to the high of uh 4335.50 and look what happened you went into a kind of a rectangle formation you broke down you went into another one made the dreaded h pattern then another h pattern and now, this is the left side. This is my plumb line for a move to the right. And look what's happened. It is, it, it came in one bar, two bars before the expected low to be tested of 4232.00. We did that right there. We went to 4229.00, and then you took it out. So that was, the, that was a test. And it's broken down now it could have a bounce but that is the power of this left side number of bars to the upside and number of bars to the downside in a parallel mirror image uh, just a nice example of that i was asked about it earlier i didn't actually have chapman wave inside wedge target uh, lines because it, it had such a vicious move to the upside before all right let's get back to the story now let's go through a couple of things so the real you know the more i look at it i've, I've, I've checked it out um, they are, it's an Anglo-Australian, I remember something about Australian, then what's the other Australian company with the B also in the commodities area, I can't remember offhand, a multinational world's second largest metals and mining corporation behind BR, BH, B, BHP, Bulletin, that's right, um, producing iron ore, copper, diamonds, gold and uranium. I don't think I want to mess around. I would personally just hold it. Um, I'd maybe do a little trading. If you took any money off, treat it as trading money, but your core position, I think I think this is in the right area, although the chart isn't as great. I mean, a, a, another stock, uh, a commodity, uh, iron ore pellets is um, Vale. Vale's doing nicely. It also hasn't made a recovery high to the left side high, but it's holding well. The, why are the steel stocks, why is U.S. steel doing so well, made a new recovery high? Uh, today, it's now down 42 cents to 32.87, but it's gone from the 24th of January around about the 18-something area. It's gone to today's high of 34.17. Are we using up so much, iron, uh, so much steel? I don't know, but all I can say is that these are all um, the, the whole commodity area. And, and in a way, steel has to be considered a commodity, have been doing really well. So I just wanted to show you this. Let's go to uh, the GDX. A bunch of questions came in with the GDX. It made a high at about just over 40. It's trading now at 38, 35. Really good action considering I suspect that gold is in play because it is the, the icon of fear. Money goes there geopolitically, economically, when big money gets nervous, they go to the dollar and they go to gold. So I, I think this is not a trading vehicle. I think it's more a positioning vehicle with a GDX. And the question has been, where would I add if I've been buying and I've taken some off? 
Well, the preference, the best place, as I said yesterday, was between 36.20 and maybe 35.10 as, as getting back in if you're out completely. If you're out completely, I think you have to just nibble here. You have to kind of be in because now the Dow's down 172. The S&P's down uh, um, 45. This is horrible action. So I, the place to be actually has been in the, um, you know, these, these particular commodities. We've got a gold stock and it's holding very nicely. Um, it's just kind of a safety precautionary measure. If you're looking at high-grade copper, high-grade copper is trading. Um, it's down from the high. I think this can, can consolidate a little bit. Maybe together they consolidate, like um, Rio and some of these stocks that have done so well. So maybe it's a concept, but I think it is kind of in the sweet spot in a way. So what we're also looking at here is I wanted to get to, so questions came in. Could I look at Amazon now that it's talking about you know, stock splits? Uh, what happens between, what was it, Amazon and, uh, what was yesterday? Uh, wait, let me just get that back again. Got a couple of questions that I just got. Uh, Amazon and Google. So, uh, look, I don't think the pattern is going to change. The tide for Amazon on the daily chart and the weekly chart, they are in sell modes. The monthly chart is so close to being called a sell mode, but I'm, a sell signal, not a sell mode, just a sell signal, but it hasn't got there yet. It is really close. I don't care whether it splits. I don't care what it does, because if you are looking at uh, the options play, you're going to be so. You instead of having it at 29, 25, 2,225, so it's 292, uh, or maybe it'll be half. So it'll be 100. What is that? Uh, two, uh, just over 150. Oh, what am I saying? Yes, 150. Let's say. So that doesn't make any difference. So I don't make. I don't think it makes any difference to the tide. The tide is going out for Amazon. The monthly chart is on the cusp of saying it's going. It's going into down downtown, but you have to give it the benefit of the doubt. I have to wait for a close below 20, probably below 2,500, to say, uh oh. Monthly is in a sell signal and probably be upgraded immediately to a sell mode, but it hasn't done that. So the split doesn't do anything. Look at Apple. Apple split. I've still got all the notations in the Chapman Wave because I do them all by hand. I've never I changed those. In fact, I drew the other ones underneath it. Um, look, those are from all. The, 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 there's my lettering peak. D pulls back. This was back in 2010. Then it goes up. It goes to peak F at 100.72. Pulls back to 55. Uh, but these are all the pre-split numbers, but I don't think it changed anything about the pattern. Apple is in a big, there's a Chapman Wave Roman candle right there, the third, uh, um, so January, February, February candle is a Roman candle, and it's a weekly chart. That says in the shorter term time frame, we are below the halfway point of this wick, Chapman Wave Roman candle's long wick. It's a not good sign. It says there's a real good chance we're going to test the lows. So all I'm going to say is I, I'm not interested in the splits Looking out, it'll be important for for people wanting to buy options, etc. But at this particular point, the tide is the most important thing, and the tide seems to be with. Look at this. If you're looking at, um, I usually go to this just as a good example. Look at DocuSign. DocuSign gap down today, 19. It's trading at down 21 uh, percent. At 74, this is a stock that was a 314.9, and everybody kept saying I, I didn't, I didn't understand it because I, I mean I understand the concept, but I, I don't use DocuSign, electronic signing. It sounded great, great up in the 300 area, and it just went straight down, and it's still going straight down. The tide is the most important thing. It's not the words; it's the tide, uh, which, which takes me to the bill that's just about to be passed. Uh, remember. The tiny print, all those little addendums and little asterisks that say, mm, 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 those become the large print over a period of three years or so. So everything that's getting signed right now, if you don't read what's there, the stuff you don't read becomes really important in a couple of years' time. So uh, it's, like the, it's like the chart, during the chart work here, the chart says on Dr. saying it doesn't matter what anybody says, the downtrend is in place and it will stay there until something spectacular turns it around and gets a trading for a, a three weeks above 105. And then I'll say, you know what, I think we've seen a turn. All right, so we've got a break coming up and I've got just those questions and the question came in and I want to do this at the end. Do you think that all the bad news is already baked into the market about interest rates? 
such that we rally on the Fed announcement of the quarter point interest rate hike. And can you look at Apple? We just looked at. We'd like to hear your take on it. Uh, all the best. I'll be back in a moment. That was Tom. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien. We're looking at the uh, question about TAN, which is the uh, TAN. Oh, I get it now. Invesco Solar Energy. Look at the monthly chart. It goes from this low that was made around about 18 or so. What was it? 17.47 in October 2018. Goes peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. The MACD and Stochastic are all still very good. And what happens is screens up for, for about uh, a year and a half. It goes all the way to the recent high in January of 2021 of 125.98 with 103 round number low. Always look at those round numbers. Uh, then it pulls back sharply, makes the dreaded H pattern at a peak B minus, pulls back and closes underneath the left side low. And that says to me, it's going to be in play at some point, but it needs to digest these gains. And the money hasn't really flowed into the uh, solar energy yet. I think it will. So thinking about this, I think at 73.60, I'd probably try to wait for a 69 area to see 60, 70 to 69 area if that holds if you're in it you don't want it to break down you want it to quickly go above the 200 period moving average to 78 so we're going to wrap up here we've got a great weekend coming up i hope um and let me just do this if the vix index is trading at the vix index has come back after being weak it's up 59 cents at 30.82 Mostly what we're looking at is that 
rallies are beginning to fail quicker and quicker. You saw that in the one minute chart, it makes a difference if you're looking at a daily or one minute chart, when the pattern says that every rally gets smaller and smaller and you make lower lows, until you change that and start making higher highs and higher lows, think of the theme of the tide. The tide says we are still going down. There was a chance that we could have moved much higher today uh, and then had a weak, clo a weak, weak curve close from the highs of the day. Didn't work that way at all. So I'm just saying be careful for subscribers. We've been raising cash. We've got some trades that go on. We've got some positions, a lot of positions, more in the commodities than anything else, uh, that area. And we are still, as I said, along the dollar. So you've got to be real careful right now. There's nothing wrong with cash. Cash is a position. And think of that. And you can have other positions, but put the potash to the IBM. Um, have a wonderful weekend, everyone, and uh, I appreciate Thank you, Tom, for letting me be a guest host, and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Hope to see you all on Monday. Building